Now, before we launch into this um, idea, which isn't introducing any new concepts, but in is introducing um, a harder, more, um, more rigorous way of working with the knowledge that you know, I just want to stop and talk about this word proof for a minute, because it's sort of up here in, in noun form, right? When you prove something, what you've created is a proof, okay? What does it mean to prove something? I'm going to give you a definition for it, okay? And this definition works across all different areas, right? What you're trying to do is demonstrate something that's true, trying to demonstrate truth, but you're trying to do it in a particular way that convinces someone else. Right? So what you need to provide is not just like, here's the truth, but you need to provide some, some reasons, right? Or some, some, something that we all agree on that we can say, yes, that makes sense, right? So we're demonstrating truth by either evidence or argument. And, and those two can um, go together, I suppose, okay? This is what it means to prove something. And it's true in all the different kinds of areas that we study. So I'm going to give you three examples, right? <clears throat> we study history, right? We study history, we study the past. You can prove something historically. How do you do it? What do you actually do to prove something historically? You go dig stuff up, right? You find evidence. It might have to be archaeological. It might have to be uh, sources and all that kind of thing, right? So what we're looking for here is, um, I'm going to say sources. That's probably the easiest way. Uh, it might be like a, a rock, or it might be something that someone has written, etc. That's how you do things when you historically prove that something is the case. Okay. What's another area, another subject, uh, apart from this one, that you do proof in? English. Do you really do proofs in English? I do science. I, I think most people would go towards... Okay, so you can, you can argue, but it's pretty hard to prove something in English, even if you can try, right? Because you can demonstrate something might be, you know plausible, but it's hard to argue something is true. I know you guys are in debates at the moment. Um, I'm going to go with Agni's idea of scientific. Now, when you have a scientific proof, you don't really go looking up for what someone said, right? Like, it's nice if you've got some physicist and they said that something was true, but that's not enough. Just because someone said something is not enough. You have to do something else. What do we do in science? In our labs, what do we do? We do experiments, right? We repeat them over and over and over again. And if the same thing consistently happens, we come up with an idea that hopefully encapsulates that. Or we, what do we call that? Starts with an H. We come up with a hypothesis. And if it supports the experiments, or the experiments support the hypothesis, we say, yes, proven. Okay? But then we have mathematical proof. That's what we're focusing on naturally in this subject. Okay? Now, Jake, you want to close that for me? I'd appreciate that. Thanks. When you prove something mathematically, the fact that someone says something, or the fact that you can do this many, many times and it looks like it seems to happen repeatedly, neither of those is sufficient. We use a completely different tool. We use logic. Now, I've put these one, two, three in a row as if they're kind of equal to each other. Uh, but they are very different. And here's why. In history, if you find new sources, the things that we thought were true, you might have to go back and say, actually, we, we don't think this was the case um, because we've found new, new evidence that suggests otherwise, right? So you find new sources and you can find things that were historically proven and actually show that they were not true at all, okay? In science, I want you to think about this. What would be the parallel here, right? When you know something, something is scientifically proven, but then we, we disprove it. How does that happen? Any suggestions? Okay, so you can have people in different parts of the world and they find different things. That's kind of a problem, right? Uh, let me give you another example. When I was in year 10, I learned that atoms looked like this. This is what my textbooks had. Maybe your textbooks are old enough that they still have these, okay? But then we learned through more and better experiments with more amazing instruments, we learned actually an atom is not like that at all. An atom's a weird, timey, wibby, wibbly, wobbly, object where you can't even know where the electrons are. They don't circle around in nice neat things like planets. Okay? They just kind of do this weird, you might be here or you might be there or you might be both places at the same time. Okay? So we experiment and we experiment better. So we disprove things. right? But mathematics is different because logic can never 
be disproven. That's what sets us apart. That's why we are so obsessed with proof. Because proving things in mathematics, once you prove something in mathematics, it's true forever. It's never disproven. It's why we still look at Pythagoras, right? Pythagoras' theorem is just as true today as it was the day it was written, okay?